Let's go. You're listening to the Cage Nation TV Prize Fight Podcast. Coming to you from the Candid Cameron Studios in State College, Pennsylvania. Here's your host, Albert Cameron. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us for the Prize Fight Podcast this week. My name is Albert Cameron, and it is an honor to have you here with us. Tomorrow night, Stage AE, Gladiators of the Cage will be returning for their 21st installment. A fight card ridiculously packed. We've got four title fights. A main event that is no joke, the return of Chris Dempsey. Chris Dempsey is coming back to uh, Pittsburgh. we got a lot of great fights here on the Prize Fight Podcast, so we're just going to get into it. If we don't cover a fight or a particular fighter, it's not because we intend any disrespect. It's because we just don't know enough about the fighter or the fight to be able to act Accurately report and depict on it. Of course, head on down to Stage A this weekend. You're going to see everything you need to know. In the first title fight of the evening, Jonas Rubiano will be taking on Cody Riggs. Rubiano, of course, is a Gladiators of the Cage veteran. He finished his last fight against Edward Massey in a spectacular second round technical knockout. Rubiano, first time I was ever introduced to Jonas Rubiano, he had successfully broken the nose of Lenny Carlheim in World Cage Fighting Championships. The kid's a stud. His training partners are absolutely incredible. His training method's incredible. The kid is building himself up to this long career with a lot of success. He's doing everything right. It's said that iron sharpens iron, and Jonas Rubiano is clearly hanging out hanging out with the right kind of iron. Now, his opponent, Cody Riggs. Riggs is an excellent journeyman with stopping power. He has been all over the place. In fact, he's never fought for the same promotion twice. He'll be making his Gladiators of the Cage debut Saturday at Stage AE, and Jonas Rubiano is going to be happy to introduce him to how Pittsburgh does fights, and we're all going to be very happy to see it. In the second title fight, Anthony Romero. We'll be taking on Isaiah Williams in an, in the title fight. Romero is currently on a four-fight winning streak with victories over two incredibly tough opponents, Fadi Schumann at Pinnacle Fighting Championships and Dustin Mohedano at Bayfront Brawl in Erie. Now, three of those wins are by decision. And last time I saw Romero fight, he fought Fadi Schumann. His gas tank was so incredibly thorough. By the time Romero got done with the fight, you could tell he'd been in a fight because, I mean, you don't walk into a bout with Fadi Schumann and not receive punishment whatsoever. But his gas tank, he was breathing evenly. He he, still had, he probably could have gone a fourth round. Probably could have gone again. Isaiah Williams is looking to add back-to-back title. Okay, here's something really interesting. Romero's last fight at Bayfront Ball was for a title. Williams' last fight was for a title. So whoever wins this fight against Anthony Romero versus Isaiah Williams, they're walking away with two championships. And a Gladiators of the Cage championship is absolutely nothing to joke about. In fact, if you head over to CageNationTV.com, this week for the Friday Five, we counted down five of the greatest title moments for Gladiators of the Cage. And Romero and Williams have a chance to be included in Volume 2 of that. Williams is a veteran of Cage Madness and the NAAFS, two circuits that if you make your way through the Cage Madness circuit and the NAAFS, trial by fire, I think is probably the best way to put it. And with Pittsburgh having Gladiators the Cage and Pinnacle Fighting Championships, Ohio having the NAAFS, Virginia having Strike Off, really good promotions in New York, really good promotions in New York, you find yourselves in this crucible of extremely tough fight promotions, and that's where champions are made. Romero versus Williams is going to be an absolute incredible bout. You don't want to miss. Ethan the Wolverine Goss is making his Gladiators of the Cage return against Chase Rowden. Goss is a King of the Cage veteran, Gladiators of the Cage veteran, Pinnacle Fighting Championships veteran, and Complete Devastation MMA veteran. His last fight, Goss showed up to fight. He was on Wade. Actually had his hotel key with him. His opponent just didn't show up for weigh-ins. He just wasn't there. Ethan Goss was livid. Of course, Goss being one of those fighters that was scheduled to fight on Gladiators of the Cage 20. I think he I think he got a much better opponent this time around. Goss is looking to improve his record to 500. Chase Rowden is being his pro debut this weekend. His amateur record, extremely impressive. I mean, he has accomplished everything in his amateur record that you would hope that an amateur would to get to that pro level. Of course, as much fun as debuting amateurs are in Pennsylvania, deb- debuting professionals come along in that same vein. That's a fight you certainly don't want to miss. Dino Euclo versus Elijah Gabil. I'm hoping I'm, I'm hoping I pronounced that right. I heard Dan Bogan, one of the best ring announcers in, in the business, pronounce it, and I, I'm struggling if it's Gabil or Gabole. If so, Elijah, I do not mean any disrespect, and I apologize apologize for butchering your name. If you want to shoot me a Facebook message and let me know how to pronounce it, I will go on air and pronounce it correctly. But Yuklo is making his pro debut. And that kind of took me back because of all the times I've ever seen Dino Yuklo fight, he's fighting like a professional already. Dino Yuklo has been through some wars that you sit back and be like, man, I remember with him fighting and I'm just finding out and he's just now making his professional debut. Now what makes Dino Yuklo so unique is his physiology. His height, his reach advantage is the same thing that makes Josh Friend kind of dangerous. They have that reach, that, that ability to keep 
range. But with Euclo, of course, if you're fighting someone with long limbs, good range, what, what are you going to do? You're going to try to take him down, right? Wrong! As dangerous as Dino Euclio is on his feet, he is equally, if not more dangerous on the ground. He is a Henzo Gracie Pittsburgh fighter with Mike Wilkins. You know, those kind of, whenever Dino Euclio gets to the ground, he's not stuck. He is, if not more comfortable than he is on his feet. Now, Elijah is a Strikehoff veteran, our friend Strikehoff down in Virginia. His last belt was lost to Joey Angelo, but it was, in, he, Elijah proved to be an incredibly tough opponent. So, Elijah Gaboli is going to be welcoming Dino Euclio to the pro ranks, and I could not be more excited. Now, I could go the low road and make some Star Wars references. I could say, may the force be with you, or that's no moon. Comma, the Death Star Worthy is going to be taking on Adrian Velaka. Worthy was supposed to fight a Gladiator of the Cage 20, but his opponent, I think his opponent missed his flight, if I'm not mistaken. It was something that I'm sure was was really irritating to everybody involved. And again, these fights I'm talking about that fell through, zero fault of the promoter. In fact, Robert Joseph, the CEO of Epic Leap Entertainment, the folks who own Gladiators of the Cage, fell on a sword he didn't even need to fall on and said, if you came here to see Kama Worthy, we're going to give you a discount on your ticket. So that was that was manning up. Now, Worthy, easily, easily one of the most popular, most dominant fighters in Pittsburgh. Going outside of Pittsburgh, things didn't go his way. But when he comes into Pittsburgh, he's just charismatic and, and flashy. I don't want to say flashy. It's not flashy. It's isn't bad. He's exciting to watch. Worthy will be making his Gladiators of the Cage debut. And, and years ago, it was like, oh man, a, a franchise fighter for Pinnacle like, fighting in Gladiators of the Cage. That was, I don't want to say a scandal, but I mean, it was kind of exciting. Well, the pit, there's enough Pittsburgh for everybody. And Gladiators of the Cage and Pinnacle have found this co-harmonious relationship where ev- there's enough MMA for everybody. And because of that, you know, Mark Cherico fought for Gladiators of the Cage. Well, Kama Worthy is going to be making his Gladiators of the Cage debut, and he does fight out of the Mark Cherico Academy of the MMA Fight Team. Velaka has been incredible. He has had impressive decisions, impressive stoppages. He's been a, a solid journeyman in the surrounding regions. This is the kind of fight that we need to bring Kama Worthy into. Kama Worthy has absolutely put the stamp on a lot of kids, and we need to get Kama Worthy a, a good, viable challenger. One, because those are kind of fights that Kama Worthy want to take, wants to take. He wants to be challenged. He doesn't want the easy fights. He doesn't want to be fed cans. He doesn't want just to look good. He wants to fight. He wants to persevere. He wants to obtain the next level. Well, Adrian Vlock is the kind of fight we need to be giving him to him. And I'm excited to have Vlock introduced to our fight scene because the more fighters we get in here, I mean, if we're challenging Kama Worthy with an Adrian Vlock, you know, no matter who wins or loses, we now have two fighters that have two great legacies that, you know, makes Pittsburgh the substantial fight circuit that it is. Robert Morrow versus Daniel the Dragon Spawn in our third third title fight. This fight is a rematch from 2013 and is now for gold. Both these fighters, their last Gladiators of the Cage fight was against Lewis the Beast Rumsey. I guess all roads go through Rumsey, especially with Dempsey on the carpet. We're going to get back into that. The fight's a rematch from 2013. Morrow is coming in as one of the most seasoned veterans to ever step into Gladiators of the Cage cage. Say that five times fast. Morrow has a very substantial record. He's fought a lot of fights. He's had a lot of experiences. He's carrying the world of experience into the cage with him. Now, he didn't beat Spawn in their first go-round, but he's looking for the rematch and he's looking for gold now of course spawn is a gladiators of the cage veteran his last fight for gladiators of the cage was against lewis Beast ramsey he's also been victorious in the cage fury cage fury fighting championships spawn is one and one against josh the sandman stansbury who is now involved with the ultimate fighter spawn himself is a bellator and a ufc veteran see every time i get on the mic for the podcast or cage nation tv i tell you guys hey go out to the local fights go see these local fights go see these regional fights i'm in state college pa right now it takes me three hours to get to pittsburgh in three hours, I can see fights of guys who are going to the UFC, who are going to Bellator, who have been in the World Series of Fighting. The ticket prices. You're going to spend more on Starbucks in a, in a month than you are on going to see a local fight in Pittsburgh. When you go to these local fights, you're plunking down money for fights that are that have extremely strong implications. So if you're sitting around and be like, oh, I'm watching Fox Sports 1 and uh, I'm a real big fan of that, uh, that Ultimate Fighting, and you're not going to Pittsburgh, if you have the ability to go to Pittsburgh and you're not going, and you're telling me how big of an MMA fan you are well i'm just gonna start name dropping these local fighters and i'm just gonna try i'm gonna tell you what you're missing if you're gonna miss robert morrow versus daniel spawn or comma worthy versus adrian Velaka, just because you know you're really missing out and i tell you these things because you're missing out on guys who are headed to the big stage chris dempsey versus adam hunter chris dempsey is a ufc veteran and easily one of the single most prolific gladiators of the cage title holders and when i say that i mean the most title defenses when chris dempsey fought lewis the beast rumsey in north shores rise to power two he fought a fight that was supposed to be middleweight ended up being light heavyweight. Chris Dempsey could have walked away from that fight and said, hey, he didn't make weight. I have no obligation to fight, but he didn't. Chris Dempsey 
Ramsey went in against Lewis with the Beast Ramsey, won the light heavyweight title, he vacated the light heavyweight title, beat Tenye Skinny Man Dixon for the middleweight championship, and then he defended that title every fight until the UFC picked him up. The last time Chris Dempsey fought in Pittsburgh, he submitted Muhammad Abdallah in the second round. His last bout in, in with Gladiators of the Cage was against Nick Krause, and he TKO'd the man in the third round. I've always said of Chris Dempsey that Chris Dempsey is a lot like Peyton Manning. He's a very patient fighter. He is comfortable killing you with a thousand cuts. He is a man who knows how to grind. He's a man who knows how to conserve his, his gas tank. He can go five rounds. That's no problem. Now, Chris Dempsey's being put up against a man who, by definition, is a knockout artist. In the last six years, Adam Hunter has not tasted defeat. Just like Chris Dempsey, Adam Hunter has title experience and knows how to keep his hands on those titles. Chris Dempsey coming back to Pittsburgh, mind-blowing. If you haven't seen Chris Dempsey in Pittsburgh, you have not seen a crowd erupt. I mean, because let's think about Pittsburgh. Penguins are in the, in the chase for the Stanley Cup. The Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, the most Super Bowl championships of any team in the NFL, I believe. The Pittsburgh Pirates, I mean, every time the Pirates win, we're raising the Jolly Roger. Pittsburgh knows how to get behind their athletes. Chris Dempsey is no exception. Chris Dempsey, the guys from the Mad Factory, the, the guys who fight at Pinnacle, the guys who, who fight for the Mark Cherico Academy. If you have never been the, the Henzo Gracie Pittsburgh, Mike Wilkins, if you have not been in attendance for a fight in Pittsburgh and you hear Bad Company by Five Finger Death Punch Hit, you have not seen a crowd erupt, especially in a great venue like Stage A East. Stage A is probably one of my bet my favorite venues for mixed martial arts. And if you have not seen Chris Dempsey arrive and have the place absolutely shaking to its girders, it's something to see. Chris Dempsey coming back to Pittsburgh is very exciting, and I'll tell you why. Now the title, the title hunt changes. I imagine it's just gonna be a matter of time before Chris Dempsey gets the right middleweight fight and he gets his title around his voice. Or it could be Adam Hunter. If Adam Hunter beats Chris Dempsey, clearly they're both in it, they're gonna be in a spot where they can get middleweight gold around their waist. Middleweight, the middleweight gladiators of the cage middleweight championship is probably one of the heaviest championships that can be contested. I believe Spawn versus uh Spawn versus Morrow is gonna be for the light heavyweight championship. Between light heavyweight and middleweight, they're the heaviest titles. Those are our heavyweights, and boy do those guys know how to throw. That's gonna be exciting. So win or lose, one, get out and see Chris Dempsey. You, you haven't seen a crowd lose his mind until Chris Dempsey walks into that. Adam Hunter, a knockout artist. Adam Hunter cares for not who he's in a fight against. He's there to fight. He's there to put guys down. That's what makes for an exciting co-main event. In the main event, Joey the Hitman Holt will be taking on Florida's Mike Popezilla Pope. Holt was supposed to fight Justin Fast Eddie Edwards for the Gladiators of the Cage Lightweight Championship. Edwards was hospitalized just hour bef- hours before the fight. Holt was supposed to fight Jordan Rinaldi tomorrow at Stage AE, but Rinaldi was picked up by the Ultimate Fighting Championships. And that, when I'm telling you, go to these local fights, I'm telling you that the UFC watches Pittsburgh. The UFC has their fingers on the vein of Steel City. You are going to see guys who are going onto the bigger stage, and, and, and I, I don't know how many times I, I got to tell you that. I'll tell you, I'll say it as many times as I need to. Rinaldi was supposed to fight Holt. Rinaldi, Uncle Dana's like, nope, he's coming with us. But that's okay because Pope is stepping in against Holt, and I got to think that Pope. I'm looking at both records. I looked at Rinaldi's record, and I looked at Pope. I think, and and I'm sure this is by design because Scott Betton and uh, Robert Joseph, they are really good fight promoters. I think Pope is going to be the better opponent for Holt than what Rinaldi would be. Holt and Pope are both fighting for the vi- the title that was vacated by Rob Hanna. Rob Hanna beat Mike Wilkins at lightweight. Hanna went to featherweight. Most of Holt's wins in his recent winning streak have been by stoppage, whether it be submission, TKO, I think he's had a decision in there. Holt has been, Joey the Hitman Holt has been successful in a lot of big regional circuits. I'm talking about the NAAFS, Gladiators of the Cage, Pinnacle Fighting Championships. Now, what Mike Pope has the benefit of is Mike Pope has not had as much experience in the Pittsburgh area as what Joey Holt has. Pope is out, he's from Florida, he's got a winning streak that is about the same as Joey Joey Holt, but on the opposite side of decisions. He, Mike Pope, has been getting decisions. He's proving his gas tank. Pope's amateur record, one of the most highly decorated championships that I've seen in a long time. What makes Mike Pope a better opponent for Joey Holt is the records are so similar. When you get two guys who are so similar, so so evenly matched, it's like Chris Dempsey versus Nick Krause. Those guys were so evenly matched that it was hard to say who had an advantage over the other. They're going to be in the main event of Gladiators of the Cage 21 at Stage AE tomorrow night. You don't want to miss it. I- I'm not a fan of picking wins. I'm not a fan of saying, oh, this guy's going to beat the other just because you don't know. Because everyone has a puncher's chance. I can't tell you for certain who does win. Pittsburgh wins. If you're down at the fight, you're seeing these fights, you're, you're getting the whole concept of the card, Pittsburgh fight fans win. That's my time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me for this week's Prize Fight Podcast. Make sure you head on down to Stage AE tomorrow night in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Make sure you check out CageNationTV.com where this week's Friday Five, we counted down the five of the greatest title moments of Gladiators of the Cage. Until next time, kids. Fights. Cameron. Action. Thank you for tuning in to the Cage Nation Prize Fight Podcast. All rights reserved 2015 2016 Planetary Sports. The Prize Fight Podcast is part of the Cage Nation Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.cagenationtv.com.